I want to show you how I do my linings. So I've taken my previous lining, I laid it out, and what I used on this jacket was a flannel interfacing. Normally I use a china silk, which is really just kind of a furrier name for like a lightweight piece of polyester, but they sell it at the fur supply place called China Silk, and you can get it white, brown, or black. Um, that's usually what I use in a mink coat. This is a Mouton jacket I'm relining, and so I'm using flannel. <clears throat> but I take my pattern that was the original, and I mark it out on my flannel, and you can see where my chalk line was. And then I cut my flannel, half inch seam allowances on the side seams and the shoulders. And then um, I do, I lay that flannel out and I set it on top of my lining and I cut my lining. And then once everything's cut, I join my flannel and my lining as one piece. So I pin the flannel to the lining and then I at my side seams I join my side seams up and then I do my shoulder seams and then I set in my sleeves so it's all constructed like it's one piece of fabric and then after I've got that done I go around the outside edge and I just sew with a little bit longer stitch um, all the way around the outside edge of the lining and attach the flannel to the lining so it's like all one unit. And then I do the same thing around the bottom. Now, if this was coat had a French hem, what I'd do is I'd turn this like a quarter of an inch. And so when I put my French hem up, this would have like a finished edge on the lining and that would like finish up like that. But this is gonna be basically just a, a plain closed hem little jacket. So after I've got my lining all joined together and I've got it stitched around the outside, then what I do is I come back and I trim my sleeve, my, not, excuse me, I trim my salvages so they're pretty even. I score my armhole up and around so I don't have to come back and do that while I'm setting it in the coat. I usually score the underarm seam and the side seam down from the armhole about an inch, no, about two or three inches. But um, that's it. Now, then I press it, so I press the whole thing. Now this is ready to set into my jacket. So it looks nice, I'm using this brown. It's a silk and Bemberg blend. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of a goldish cast to it. But uh, it will set in there real nice. So next I'm going to show you how I set it in. So to set it in the coat, what I do is, here's my lining. I've got the center back marked going down so I know where the center back is on that lining. Now, I also did the same on the coat. So here's the center back of my coat. What I'm gonna do is take the center back of my lining and start at the neck and pin my center back of my lining down to the center back of my coat. And I'll show you what that's like in a second. So you can see I've got my center back of my lining pinned down about every five, six inches to the center back of my coat, all the way down to the hem. Now, after I've got that done, what I'm gonna do is turn the lining towards the front, and I'm gonna pin it in that same spot on the, fat, on the right side. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So I've got my lining turned to the right side out, and I had my original pin line on the fold when it was flipped over probably about right here so I came back and I've got a new set of pins just on the right side of the lining all the way down and then I went back to the underneath side and removed my original set of pins 
Now the next step is where we're going to go over to the side seam. So we're going to fold our lining back to expose the side seam of our lining and we're going to match the underarm seam right here where our lining joins the sleeve right at the underarm and I'm going to position this here and then what I'm going to do is smooth the lining out and along this side seam and then I'm going to tack it from about oh, about two inches below the armhole down about maybe three or four inches about five inches above the hemline and I'll show you how that looks that keeps the side seam stable in the coat and keeps it from shifting So here's where I've got that stitched down. I started about uh, two and a half, three inches below the armhole, and I just lightly hand basted that down to the side seam, one side of the side seam um, salvage to the body of the coat. And next what we're gonna do is, normally what I do is I do the same thing as I did here to the underarm seam on my sleeve. I take my sleeve out and I base this um, underarm seam down from a probably about right here, about four or five inches in length down the side seam of the sleeve. But this coat is so stiff, it's a mouton, that I'm gonna do that later. But anyway, that's normally what, it, what the next step is. So I'm just gonna tuck this sleeve in here to get rid of it in the arm in the sleeve in the armhole and then I'm gonna move on to the front so I'll show you what we're gonna do next with the front we're gonna take our lining and we're gonna move this over to the front and I'm gonna pin my lining in up to the front edge and part of the hem on this what we do is we work the coat in quarters so we start at the center back and then we move over to the side seam. We get the side seam straight and nice. And then we work to the front edge. Then we come back and we do the other half of the coat. And then um, I'll show you what we're, how we proceed. So we're back and I wanna show you how I finished fitting that lining in. So I started at the where I smoothed this over to the front but then I come back and I start at my underarm of my armhole and I can feel the underarm seam right through the lining and I secure my lining to the body of the coat walking around this armhole all the way from the bottom to the top on the front and from the bottom to the top on the back of the armhole. Once that's secure with pins, then I like to start at the top and I come up to my shoulder and I've got my shoulder seam right here and I go over to my neck and I open up the salvage a little bit underneath there so it lays good. I pin that, then I fold the lining underneath and sometimes I score the the salvage of the lining a little bit um, not often but sometimes I do and I just take that and get that turned so that it looks nice and smooth all the way down the front of the coat and I start at the top and across from this armhole and work my way over and then from my side seam I got it pinned here so you can see it a little better. And I work my side seam over to the front. And all the way from, I turn my hem at the same time now. And I go all the way down to the bottom, turn my hem, and uh, work that all the way over to the front. So this is all pinned in. And I've got my hem pinned in, my front's pinned in. And then, um, work away towards the center back around my around my neckline and that's all pinned in so once it's all pinned in it sets nice 
and um, got my lining all pinned in at the hemline and now it's just to sew it in so I start it's like a clock you start at this end down here and I stitch from this side up and around the neckline all the way down the other side of the front and then I'll close my bottom the hemline and then what I do is I come up to the shoulder and I'll take a couple of stitches right through this seam a hidden stitch and I'll catch that shoulder pad um, to I'll catch my lining down to that shoulder pad right here at the at the shoulder seam and then after it's in I take all my pins out and I'm pretty much done label whatever now a lot of times the neckline on a coat will get ruching I didn't put ruching in on this um, it'll get a hanky pocket it might have a French hem or the linings open at the bottom instead of this is going to have a closed hem so it all depends on what you know how you do it but this is a basic jacket lining throw it in and it works beautiful work your coat in sections start from the center back work towards the side seam then over to the front do the opposite direction on the other half of the coat center back to the side seam to the front and once this is pinned in it's beautiful i don't even have to put this on a dress form it'll hang gorgeous and um it'll look nice when it's all done i want to show you the stitch that i used to sew the lining in so i'm using a white thread to be very obvious <clears throat> so i take a double thread and I use a silamide thread size C usually and I'm going to take about a half an inch of the lining and then I dig into the fur on the facing and take a stitch down come up half an inch of the lining down into the fur half an inch of the lining down into the fur so you can see how I'm doing that and then after I've done about four or five stitches I like to just make sure it looks good and about every seven or eight inches I'll go and I'll <clears throat> run a knot down and secure it I don't cut my thread I just keep on sewing and what happens is if that lining were to come unsecure in some spot that knot will keep it from um, you know opening up the whole length of the seam so that's basically how it's done so your lining is sewed to your coat not your coat to your lining that's the difference and once this is in a matching thread it's perfect I've did this stretch back here and you can't even see where I sewed it because I sewed it in a brown thread so this would be done all the way around the whole perimeter of the lining and that's basically <clears throat> the best stitch that you can use um, when doing fur it's a half an inch in and you catch your fur and you're good So I'm going to rip that out and redo it in brown. I just want to show you one more time that um, stitch. So I've completely sewed this all the way around. And this is my hem. And <clears throat> when I do that hand stitch, it's a stitch in the lining, a stitch in the fur, a stitch in the lining, about a half an inch, a stitch in the fur and then you just draw it closed now the whole time I'm sewing 
my right hand is making the stitches with my needle and my my other hand is underneath here and I can support what I'm sewing and I know exactly where that stitch is being um, put in because I can feel that with my finger right underneath the coat. So that's kind of keeps your um, your base good when you're stitching. So see how nice that lays all the way around the whole perimeter of my of my hem. It looks good. And the front edge of my coat where I've stitched it all the way up along the front of my coat, what I've done is I've just gone past that there's seam tape underneath here. I've just gone past the seam tape to secure the lining just over the edge of the seam tape along the edge of the fur. So that's what you want. You don't want to go, originally this was stitched way back here, and I'm going to brush that out and comb that out because that wasn't necessary. You can see that bad crease line. So that kind of gives you an idea of how it was originally stitched in, which was kind of wonky. But <clears throat> it looks good all the way around. On the sleeve lining, what I do is I just turn my um, sleeve all the way so my lining's um, tucked into my sleeve. And then I match the underarm seam of the lining to the underarm seam of the sleeve. And I put my hand inside and I just kind of like spread the sleeve all the way down so that I'm sure that I've got the right... Um, you know, so that the, it's not twisted. And then I just secure it at the bottom with a couple of pins. And I've got my pin still up at the top so I know my sleeve isn't pulling. I know my shoulder's right on the shoulder. And then it's just to close the bottom. And I like to leave just a little bit of play in the sleeve, maybe about a half an inch. And then I do an uh, invisible stitch just about an inch and a half above the bottom of the lining. And that uh, shuts your sleeve lining. So that's all set there. So I just want to show this to you. Um, it's all set. The lining's in and um, it looks beautiful. I could put it on a dress form and try it out, um, but I know this fits. So that's the way we do it. I want to show you how I do my linings. So I've taken my previous lining, I laid it out, and what I used on this jacket was a flannel interfacing. Normally I use a china silk, which is really just kind of a furrier name for like a lightweight piece of polyester, but they sell it at the fur supply place called China Silk, and you can get it white, brown, or black. Um, that's usually what I use in a mink coat. This is a Mouton jacket I'm relining, and so I'm using flannel. <clears throat> but I take my pattern that was the original, and I mark it out on my flannel, and you can see where my chalk line was. And then I cut my flannel, half inch seam allowances on the side seams and the shoulders. And then um, I do, I lay that flannel out and I set it on top of my lining and I cut my lining and then once everything's cut I join my flannel and my lining as one piece so I pin the flannel to the lining and then I at my side seams I join my side seams up and then I do my shoulder seams and then I set in my sleeves. So it's all constructed like it's one piece of fabric. And then after I've got that done, I go around the outside edge and I just sew with a little bit longer stitch um, all the way around the outside edge of the lining and attach the flannel to the lining so it's like all one unit. 
and then I do the same thing around the bottom. Now, if this was coat had a French hem, what I do is I turn this like a quarter of an inch. And so when I put my French hem up, this would have like a finished edge on the lining and that would like finish up like that. But this is going to be basically just a, a plain closed hem little jacket. So after I've got my lining all joined together and I've got it stitched around the outside, then what I do is I come back and I trim my sleeve, my not, excuse me, I trim my salvages so they're pretty even. I score my armhole up and around so I don't have to come back and do that while I'm setting it in the coat. I usually score the underarm seam and the side seam down from the armhole about an inch, no, about two or three inches. But um, that's it. Now, then I press it. So I press the whole thing. Now this is ready to set into my jacket. So it looks nice. I'm using this brown. It's a silk and Bemberg blend. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of a goldish cast to it. But uh, it will set in there real nice. So next I'm going to show you how I set it in.